I've got one that can see. Hey, good morning. Hope y'all are doing all right this morning. I just wanted to read a couple parables that Jesus spoke and share my thoughts a little bit on the whole predestination, free will topic. And uh, this probably give you guys some good stuff to ponder about it. And I'm not saying either or. I'm not saying that there is no free will or that there is no predestination. I just want to show you a little bit of what my understanding, just through reading these scriptures, are. And you guys kind of search it out on your own. But I want to read the parable of the good ground. And then I want to read one more. And then I have a couple other scriptures I want to share. But uh, Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 through 23 this one's a little long, but uh, I'll try to get through it quick. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had much, not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness in the earth or of the earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched. And because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell into good ground and brought forth fruit. Some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. See, Jesus spoke in parables, said that only those that had ears could hear. People that weren't given the ears to hear, the people that had the scales on their eyes, they could not hear what he was saying. But anyway, verse 12, For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him, him shall it be taken even that he hath. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because they seeing, not see, and hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, Isaiah which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing yes, ye shall see, and not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. It says, But be blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you, that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things that ye see. And I have not seen them, and to hear those things ye have heard, and not and have not heard them. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When any one heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then come the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. It says this is he which received seed by the wayside. See these people; these are people that that hear the gospel, hear the word of God kind of like in passing, but they're all involved in this world and the devil will, you know, feed them the lies and they believe and that 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 seed, that truth they heard about the gospel and God's kingdom, it just it falls by the wayside. Okay. But he that receiveth the seed into the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and on on with joy receives it. Yet he hath not root in himself, but Dureth for a while, for when tribulation or persecution arises, people, because of the word, by him they are offended. And these are like the people that that hear it, and they believe it, but they care more about the cares of this world. And whenever tough times come, it like they choke it out of them. They they turn back to the world. Okay, verse twenty-two. He also that receiveth seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word, 
and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. That's kind of like the one before it. But, you know, the cares of this world, they choke it out like thorns would choke out the seed. But he that receiveth seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. And this has a lot to do with the fact that we all we can do is plant seeds, and then another person waters it, because only God can bring the increase, because a lot of the people aren't God's children. We'll go past this parable and read one more. This has a lot to do with uh, right here, John six forty four. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent him, draws him, and I will raise him up in the last day. There are certain chosen people that were we find the Holy Spirit works through us, and we share the truth and. Uh, it's not free will to just believe the gospel and get saved like all like a lot of these churches talk about. And I'm going to show you right here. Uh, okay, Ephesians 1, 4 and 5. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. So there's a group of people that he chose before he created this flat earth says that we should be holy and without blame before him and love, having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. So something happened before the foundation of this world, and I've shared this before, but I think it has something to do with the rebellion, the fall, where a certain group of us did come to repentance and those of us are the ones that God wrote our names in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he puts us down here where he can find us. Let me show you the scripture that goes with that right here. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which sowed good seed into the field. But my, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. So God, he puts us down here. And this flesh, right? And then an enemy plants his children down here with us. Okay, But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the children of the devil and God's children, we all grow up together. You know, we don't know who God's children are because God can save anyone. And uh, I'm going to get to that one here in a second, but... Uh, so the servants of the household came and said unto him, Sir, didst thou not sow good seed into the field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, says, Wilt thou when they go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest ye shall gather the tares, ye root also the wheat with them. Let both grow together into the harvest. And in the time of the harvest I will say to the reapers, Gather ye to gather the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them and gather the wheat in the barn. But I, I really believe that it, it makes sense to me the fact that, like I said, the devil has some type of power. He's able to plant his children down here among us. And God puts his children where he can come and find them. Like it says, no man cometh to the Father unless he's drawn. But I'm going to go up here top. This is the one that... I want to read. This is where Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. John eleven thirty nine. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha. The sister of him that was dead saith in him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead for days. This symbolizes the people of this world that haven't been saved. They're dead. They stinketh. I mean, you can share the gospel. You can share the truth until you're blue in the face. It's not going to matter because they're dead. Think about it. You go up to a corpse, kick it a couple times, tell it whatever you want. It's not going to hear anything because it's dead. It's dead. It stinks. But verse 43, it says, And when he has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. 
unless Jesus calls you, the, draw, the, the Father draws you, then you're dead. Only Jesus can raise the dead. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him and let him go. So my whole point is on this is, yeah, we share the gospel with everyone, but there's only certain ones that are chosen that God's going to take the scales off their eyes, per se. Like in Acts, it says, Immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight. So this is more than just physical sight. Like Jesus, when he uh, healed the blind, he uh, rubbed his hands and spit in some mud and rubbed it over their eyes and his the scales. He had the, you have actually have scales that fall off your eyes, but they're spiritual scales, where you know there are certain people that can see but not perceive. They hear but don't understand. Jesus has to give you understanding. He has to call you. And as far as free will, I do believe that it's somewhere in the middle. I believe that like we have free will, like I can choose to go here or go there or choose to eat a sandwich or to eat a burger. I mean, stuff like that. Yeah. But spiritual issues, only God brings the increase. And I just, I do not think that God is in heaven waiting to react to what we choose. God's children were already chose before the foundation of this world. According as he hath chosen us, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. You know, those of us he chose, he put us where we would receive the gospel and we are covered. Our sins are removed as far as the east is from the west. We are sons of God. We are adopted into his family. And it also says, no man can pluck us out of his hands. Having predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. I think that's about all of them. Not too long of a video. But I uh, just want to share that. I mean, I just I always hear people talk about choose God today. Which, I mean, the Bible does say choose who this day you're going to serve. I get that. But unless God draws you and takes the scales off your eyes and does you like he did Lazarus, where he says, and he said that was dead, come forth, and he commanded Lazarus. Here it is. And when he thus hath spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. You know, when you're dead, we're all dead in our trespasses. You know, we're all on our way to hell. But God has mercy on certain people, his children, and it's the ones that he predestined before the foundation of this world. Anyway, just think about it. I'm not saying, you know, there is no free will, but I just believe that when it comes to salvation, your name has to be written in that Lamb's book before the foundation of the world, and he knows who are who his are. He knows us. He, he knew us before we were fashioned in our mother's womb. I think it says that in Jeremiah. But anyway, that's it. Hope you guys have a good day. Take care.